<laughs> Derek, Derek, come forward. The most haunted theatre in the world, lost and alone at Drury Lane. This is feeling very weird. Welcome to Most Haunted. Now, according to theatrical folklore, it's incredibly lucky to have a resident ghost in a theatre, which must make this week's location one of the luckiest theatres in the world, because it has at least five ghosts. We're in London at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane, and we're going to be spending 24 hours hoping that the resident ghosts are going to put on one big performance. There's been a theatre on this site since 1661, and the present building dates from 1812, which makes it the oldest theatre in London. It's reputedly the most haunted theatre in the world, and Drury Lane is now almost as famous for its ghosts as for its long-running musicals. Now, Jason, this is supposed to be the most haunted theatre in the world. Is that true? Allegedly, yes. Right. What sort of ghosts are here? We've got an interesting mixture of different hauntings supposed to be in this building. The main one is probably London's most famous ghost, and that's the Man in Grey, who's supposed to be an actor from the 1700s. One of the strange things about the Man in Grey ghost is that 70 people saw him at the same time. Now, this took place during a photo session on stage. The actors were staring into the darkness and saw a movement here where we're seated, and 70 people watched the Man in Grey walk across this very area. Now, because of its reputation, a lot of people actually come and try to find ghosts here, don't they? Yeah, we are actually following the footsteps of the greats, and that is uh, James Wentworth Day, who's a very famous ghost writer, and also Harry Price, who came here. They both held an investigation, actually, in the upper circle where we're sat here. And James Wentworth Day believes that he actually saw the man in grey, but not as a figure, as most people have reported it, more as a sort of blue haze that moved across, across the area and into the wall. What do you think might happen to us tonight? Theatres are eerie places when there's nobody in them. We're, we're used to them being full of people and quite noisy places with music and laughter. When we're here this evening, it's going to be dead silent. There's no windows the outside, so it's very much sort of like being in a shell. So it's going to be a very peculiar kind of environment for us to investigate. I think that will put us on edge. We may see something, we may not, but we've got to remember noises in here are going to be massively echoed because of the shape of the building. So any small, tiny, probably insignificant sound will be blown into a, or probably an unnatural proportion and we need to keep our feet on the ground. As usual, joining Jason and myself with a fearless crew, constantly working to try to catch something paranormal on camera. And Derek Okora, our spiritualist medium, would arrive later with no prior knowledge as to the whereabouts of the location. Theatre or Drury Lane is supposedly the most haunted theatre in London. Um, the best known story is the story of the man in grey, um, who is a, a chap who, um, dressed in 18th century clothing, walks along the back of the upper circle in the building. Dan Lino was a very famous pantomime dame who performed here um, at the end of his career. He, he died in 1904. Um, and he did about 20 pantomimes here as a dame. Um, and he's reported to haunt the backstage areas. When you know about these ghosts that they're supposed to be here, you sort of think, hmm, will I see one? I don't know. And I'm not a one to necessarily believe that they're all around. But when I get out at night, I'm able to cross the stage to the stage door. And one night, I heard like footsteps as I going from the stage to the stage door. And I looked and could see nothing. But I did hear footsteps and I thought, now, it could be anything. There's a, a, a ghost that people call the Lavender Lady because the apparition is noticed because you can smell lavender in the backstage areas. Also, going back further in time, uh, Joseph Grimaldi, the famous clown who gave the name Joey to clowns, um, he used to work between here and Sadler's Wells. Um, and it's rumoured that he haunts the stage area. And if there's any actor that isn't actually giving their best performance, then Grimaldi will come up behind him and give him a kick up the bottom. 
I know someone who said he was given a kick at the bum to say, get on with it, because he thought, oh, I can't do it tonight. Oh, God, I can't do it tonight. And he said he didn't know where it came from, but there was a kick up the bum. Well, I'm as sceptical as anybody about any of these things. There must be a lot of auto-suggestion in it. But when you do hear stories about the man in grey where more than one person has seen him at, at any one time, um, it does make you wonder. So I'm sceptical, but I'm prepared to believe that there's something to it. It's easy to understand why people fall in love with the theatre, and especially in a building as beautiful as this. Maybe that's why some people refuse to leave, even when they're dead. In the late 1700s, a fight broke out between two of the actors. One lunged at the other with his cane, piercing his eye and instantly killing him. But curiously enough, it's not the dead man that haunts Drury Lane, but his murderer. And he's often seen early evening at the time when the fight broke out. One of the most famous characters here is Joseph Grimaldi, who was known as the father of the clowns. Now, the clown makeup that he created has been copied by British clowns ever since. With Derek's arrival and the theatre well into its evening's performance, what better time to relax and prepare for the night's event? Well, when we're at the theatre tonight, I really don't know at this point what to expect. And generally, wherever you, you find expression, as with actors and theatres, what is charged in the atmosphere, I find, is this gentleness, this sensitivity. Most ghost stories are sort of frightening or eerie or unnerving. The ones here aren't. They're friendly. The man in grey, when it's seen, it's taken as an omen of good fortune. It's always reportedly seen before successful productions. There's a nice story about the helping hands, which usher people around the stage during rehearsals and give them a, a friendly pat when they're in the right place. With the theatre having such a ghostly reputation, expectations were running high. Would we see any ghostly actors? Would Derek make contact with any of them? Them, or would it be an empty house? It's a rich, rich. As the evening was drawing to a close for the theatre goers, it was time for our evening to begin. As usual, we wanted our spiritualist medium, Derek Akora, to see if he could contact any ghosts waiting in the wings. Well, Yvette, Jason, I'm picking up exactly. Zilch, nothing. Are you not beginning with Nothing at all? Nothing whatsoever. This is quite alarming. If there's no spirits about, I can't do my job. No. And it, it, it's the only thing that frightens me. Mm. Should we just have a, a walk round and, and, yeah. and see, go into some of the major parts of the theatre? I'd like to do see, that. Yeah. Yeah. Which way do you fancy going? I think we should go up into the, the circle, okay. actually. Which I think is up this main staircase. Okay, let's do Which that. Should we go up there? Okay. Yeah. So Derek was picking up nothing. This was very unusual and a little disconcerting for us. However, as we entered the auditorium, we were all relieved as Derek felt the presence of a man. Now, since I've come into, just through that door, I've become very, very aware, not so much the presence of the man, but he walks, oh, often, up across the back here. He comes down and he has a look over from this level then goes, retraces his steps and goes back again. And he's up and down on a regular basis. This man is like a troubled soul. And if we can, I'd like to walk up to that particular space and see when I get closer to that energy, whether I can then extend on the, the feelings that are coming here. Yeah, it's here. Just at this section here. OK. And he often, often comes through those doors and, and does this, you see, and views down. Why is Go. he here and what's...? Right. He's, um, he's troubled... He's troubled because of an act that he did and he's remorseful. And it's like he roams up and down here, constantly playing back what he actually did, but he's remorseful for it. Do you know what he did? Yes, I got a dagger in my side and it 
ran between my ribs. And I feel this man did exactly that. Charles! Charles! Macklin! Charles Macklin! This person whose life he took away is also in the essence here. But this other soul will not forgive him. Who's the other soul? Arnold! 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 He's coming into my energy. He's coming into my energy. Arnold! You'll never forgive him. I'll never forgive him. I will never forgive him. Jealous of my talent. He always was and he always will be. How dare he? How dare he? He is the lesser. Even Hallam agrees with me. Hallam warned me. He warned me. But I didn't listen. Oh, what a folly. Oh, what a folly. What year is it? 1700. 1700? Yes. He took my life. For jealousy? Yes. What was he jealous of? Of my acting. So you were I'm an actor? I'm the principal. You were an actor? I'm a principal. Without me. Without me. It couldn't go on. Why? This wretch keeps me here. He's a wretch. A wretch. Murdered him, won't let him out of the atmosphere, and he won't forgive him. So he keeps him here, and in his torment, um, he's keeping him into the atmosphere because they're both in equal um, levels. No, Derek, where, where were we when you didn't feel anything? Just come with me. Come with me. Let me go. Can we take you downstairs? Where you didn't feel anything earlier, so it should be clear. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Just sit down. That's very interesting. Just to try and clear. That's when we first sit that. Look at that. Yeah, I just I don't like it at all. It freaks you out a bit. I've seen mediums go into alleged transfiguration, where a spirit is alleged to take on temporal possession of the body and control. Um, I've seen Derek do it before. Well, he was just sweating and just so upset and to actually call for Carl because he actually has said to Carl in the past if you see me in trouble you must say to me grab hold of me and say come forward come forward it's not nice to see at all it's frightening mm. it's interesting the supposed ghost of Arnold seemed to have taken its toll on Derek we decided now was a good time to switch to our night vision cameras and split into two groups Mark, Martin and Ian were in one group, Jason, Rick, Carl and myself in another. seen a man with chains walk behind Carl. We also heard the sound of the chains and caught it on tape. And oddly enough, the sound doesn't fade away. It abruptly stops. Did you just see someone in there? Yeah, I saw a man with chains. He walked across here. No, he walked across there. He didn't. Yes, he did. He must have gone upstairs. Well, he's nowhere around. He would not. He could not have made it up these stairs at that 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 speed. 
you were standing with your camera pointing at the three of us. And we, we looked beyond you and there was a man walking from the left to the right. Side on. Carrying the weight of chain. A massive bunch of chains. Um, in black. Dark hair, little fat guy. A little stout man, quite sort of with a bit of a tummy. Probably about five, eight, five, nine. But we can't find him. There's no way he could have come up here. He just disappeared. There's nobody else here, apart from us. We never did find out who the man with the chains was. Was it a ghost we had seen or someone else in the building who we didn't know about? Whoever or whatever it was, they disappeared without a trace. Mark, Martin and Ian seemed to be having trouble finding their way around. Slowly, they were beginning to get a little spooked. Wardrobe stuff. You sure it's wardrobe? There's someone down there. <laughs> it's, 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 um... Should we do that door? Can't hang around, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> go, to, go out in that door at the end. God, I tell you what, this is getting really freaky now. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! Wow, there's some back out of the leaves. Yeah. Oh, We went down those stairs and then went down a corridor. So how can we go downstairs, along the corridor, and up the same set of stairs? We've just gone a massive circle round in that room. While the smaller crew tried to find their way out, we decided to set up a shot of us walking along a corridor. Little did we know that there was something at the end of it. Go, get on, get on, get on. Where? Where? There was two legs just there. Where? Across just there. here, just right across there. Two legs there, just there. They were moving on their own. I saw them. I saw them. We all bloody saw them. them. Here, facing this way, there was two that set of legs, legs. And it was just doing that. I only saw the legs. I didn't do just anything else. What was it doing? It was just like that. Just moving just like moving that. Like that. Two legs. They were just black. They were just black. Yes. And I saw them as well. God, and that's why we all ran. I did see them. Why is it whenever we have lock-offs, we always put them in the wrong place? This was the first location where some of us had seen what we considered to be a ghost. Who did the pair of legs belong to? Recently, a photographer was taking shots of the interior of the theatre. He swears nobody was on the stairs at the time this photograph was taken. Look closely on the right-hand side. Maybe this is the ghost who likes to walk the staircases, and maybe it was his legs that we saw. With the night drawing to a close, Carl, Rick and Stuart decided to go back into the auditorium and see if the man in grey would show himself. Apparently, he liked to sit in a particular chair. This is where he sits in this, this chair here. D. Why don't you go sit in there, Rick, and I'll come up the top. In his chair. His chair. Yeah. Here's Stuart joining me. We'll spin the camera around for a minute. Hello. So this is the chair that I'm actually sat in. Which this ghost is supposed to sit in. With Rick and Stuart waiting for something paranormal to happen in the ghost chair, Carl was filming in the area where the man in grey has been seen walking. This is feeling very weird. I'm pretty sure something just shot across the screen. Carl had seen something. It was an orb, which is one of the first stages of a ghost manifestation. It seemed odd that it was caught on camera in the same place where Derek had made contact with the man in grey. Let's go up top and see BT. Stu, flashes a light, mate, so I can see where I'm walking. Got you. Carl? Where I was sat before, the actual, you know, the bit that pulls down to sit on? Yeah. It's come down. It's come down? Yeah. It was up because I'd just had the camera on it. Oh my God, it is as well. It's down. It's down. Oh. All the other chairs are up. This is where I was sat in that chair there. Stuart was sat here and the chairs spring back. See, the chairs do that, look. Every chair. So why is that like that? When I got up from that, that chair was up. So I just filmed it. It's come down on its own. 
Well, I think it's very strange that that is the actual chair that he's been seen in. Was there some body in the auditorium with them? The chair coming down and the orb Carl had seen. Were they related to the ghost of the man in grey? Well, I can say categorically that I saw something very odd. It would look like a pair of legs. Two other people saw it, Yvette and Rick as well. We all saw the same thing at the same time, and that's the key. Because with so many ghost sightings, you get single, uncorroborated evidence where one person has had some sort of experience and you hear it secondhand as an anecdotal account. This is not that. This is three people seeing the same thing who have seen something they can't explain. When I was first told about it, um, my psychic inclinations were telling me, yes, they most definitely uh, have experienced this. And it wasn't in any way imagination that was real. As a possible explanation, I could say the usual things. We were very tired, it was very dark, perhaps we imagined it. But it would be very unusual if three people imagined the same thing at the same time in the same place. I did see that pair of legs. They were just there. Now, naturally, I've got a guide who I rely upon. His name's Sam. And without him, really, my work wouldn't be um, as protected without his presence. He's always there for me and will not allow me to go too far and get too distressed, taking on those conditions of maybe what that spirit actually experienced. Well, the investigation last night here at Theatre Royal, the most haunted theatre in the world, is extremely special for me because I followed in the footsteps of some of the great ghost hunters, Harry Price and James Wentworth Day, and I will always remember it. Well, last night was a revelation for quite a few of us, and I definitely saw a pair of legs on the stairs. Whether they belong to a ghost, who knows? Until the next location, sleep tight. What was that? 